It's too loud. It's too loud. Coming over the top! Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Solanum virus featured in the 2013 zombie disaster film World War Z, starring Brad Pitt, which is based on the apocalyptic novel of the same name by Max Brooks. The virus was also first featured in Brooks' earlier work, The Zombie Survival Guide, which was a survival manual for dealing with the fictional potentiality of a zombie attack. The Solanum virus wastes no time once it's infected a host. The virus successfully uses the cells of the brain's frontal lobe for replication, which subsequently destroys them in the process. Once the brain is infected with Solanum, most bodily functions would begin to shut down, including the heart and lungs. It's at this stage when all traces of the host's humanity, personality, and individuality are irrevocably lost that they begin to turn into the undead. Essentially fast-moving zombies with a pack mentality, the sole motivation of the undead was to infect living cells, but not to eat living tissue, which sets the Solanum virus apart from other undead outbreaks. In essence, the infected people would begin operating like a virus. In the film, we notice that they simply bite into non-infected tissue, and once they've deposited their viral load, they move on to the next person. When a person was bitten, it took roughly 12 seconds for the virus to travel to the brain and replicate itself to the point that it had full control over the body. During this time, the victim will suffer from what appears to be violent seizures as the body succumbs to the virus. Although most people turned after 12 seconds, the incubation period did vary depending on the way Solanum had been contracted. Bites from the zombies would cause people to turn rapidly, giving them a few seconds before it took hold, while scratches and contact with infected fluids took a bit longer. Once infected, the brain continued to function on a basic level, instructing the reanimated hosts to hunt and consume anything that they identified as living, though it's been proven that they preferred to prey on humans. Based on what we found, the virus appears to have a 100% fatality rate. Solanum has also been noted to only be transferable through bites, scratches, and the transference of infected blood through open wounds. And as of yet, no waterborne or airborne form of the strain has been identified. One of the most bizarre things noted about the infected humans was that their energy sources are still a mystery, as they don't actually consume flesh. They also have the ability to continue moving indefinitely without food, water, or rest, although when there is no human activity, they've been noted to remain in a sort of dormant state. It's also been noted that even when a zombie consumes an organism, the cells infected with Solanum do not draw energy from the flesh being consumed. It's explained that the flesh merely remains in the digestive tract of the zombie until it rots. In both the source material and film, the zombies are attracted to any loud noises, especially those that are man-made, which increase their chances of finding non-infected victims. In the film, we notice that the zombies only seem to go after people who are healthy, while those that were seriously injured or ill were ignored by the infected. It's this discovery that led to the World Health Organization to concoct the vaccine that rendered individuals undetectable to zombies by tricking them into thinking the person was infected with a serious illness. Despite the fact that many researchers and scientists had searched the entire world, they were unable to find any isolated samples of the virus in nature. Nevertheless, researchers were able to trace the virus to the Yangtze River in China. Some of the documents published in the Zombie Survival Guide, which was published a few years earlier, did confirm that China had been conducting experiments with the Solanum virus after the end of the Second World War. This concept is expanded upon in the novel World War Z by Max Brooks, which chronicles the fictional war against the undead. Through a series of oral interviews, Brooks explains that Patient Zero was believed to have been discovered in China, and the government had essentially attempted to contain the news, and created a fictional crisis involving Taiwan to mask what they were doing. This idea actually came from the real-life Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS for short, which was a virus which broke out in China in 2002. The virus eventually spread to the rest of the world and infected close to 8,000 people, killing more than 770 of those that were infected. During this time, Chinese officials were accused of being less than honest about the outbreak, which hindered the efforts of the World Health Organization at containment. While zombies are purely fictional creatures, given the recent pandemic we've all been struggling with, Brooks's novel is another example of the cycle of art being inspired by life, before life beginning to imitate art itself. I really enjoyed watching World War Z the first time around. 
But after reading the books, it's clear that much of the story had been watered down to create a single self-contained film. In what should have been a trilogy covering everything from the pre-war outbreak, the many battles that were fought, and the post-war conflicts as each of the countries attempted to reclaim their cities. All of the geopolitics and environmental consequences of the war are completely overlooked. I was also genuinely surprised to hear that the film that we saw was the result of last minute changes and expensive reshoots. The original script had a completely different ending, which set up a sequel. This essentially featured Jerry and Sagan arriving in Russia, before being forced to fight for months against the undead. Jerry loses communication with his wife and kids, and eventually becomes a cold, effective zombie killer, and a leader of a battalion on the front lines, which would have been really awesome to see. With major production delays, weeks of reshoots, and a complete rewrite of the final act, we ended up with a rushed, happy Hollywood ending that only scratched the surface of the genius that is Max Brooks. If you really enjoyed the film, I recommend that you check out both of his novels, which I'll leave links to below. That's all for today, folks. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.